button. The red button? Is it like red button? The red button? Is it like the red pill? The red button? The... Shut up. Anyway, I ended up hitting the red button twice. When you hit the red button twice, it stops the video and then starts a new one. But if you don't name the new video in between, it records over the video. So it was a 15 minute long video and it was basically talking about this issue right here. Banking while block. This particular incident happened at US Bank, but it's happening across the country in banks that they are giving people of color a harder time. This young man in this particular incident had an account with the bank. Had an account with the bank. And the bank simply told him that his check was fraudulent. Now, hold on, hold on, what you don't get, not only did the bank tell him that his check was fraudulent, but the bank never checked with the company to determine whether or not the check was valid or not. They just told him the check was fraudulent. Looked at it, said it was fraudulent. Didn't compare signatures or nothing. Told him this is fraudulent. <laughs> Said, we've received quite a few checks from this company and they're all fraudulent. That's a lie. That's a lie. They never produced any evidence for the police or nobody that they received a bunch of checks. Just said it, y'all. Just said it. <sighs> this young man, they put him in handcuffs because he stood up. Officer said, come on. He stood up and she grabs him and puts him in handcuffs. Said he made a threatening move. How dare you threaten Move like that. Why are you threatening to move? Is that anything like bust a move? Oh, I'm sorry. Ski low too much? Oh, no, I apologize. That wasn't ski low. Then who was it? That was Young MC. Young MC, that's right. Bust a move. If you want it. Oh, I'm sorry. I got it. Y'all don't know bust a move, but... Young MC, oh come on! Sorry, uh, when I met Queen Latifah, Young MC was at the very same event. I didn't want to meet Young MC. I, I, his music was all right, but wasn't interested. I was interested in meeting Dana Owens. Didn't even know that was her name at the time. I just knew that I was Queen Latifah because I wanted her to do me a favor in the industry, but didn't work out that way. All right. Let's get to this young man right here. Banking while black. We're going to let him tell the story. Then I'm going to interrupt. And then we're going to let him tell the story. And then I'm going to interrupt. You know how I do things. Hey, uh. It settled with Morrow after we started asking questions. But we were still able to obtain police body camera video of that incident that the bank does not want. Ladies and gentlemen, this reporter right here, I give this man some credit. Rasmussen, this, this boy is a beast. Because he didn't stop. Every single time they told him, no, we ain't giving you that. No, you can't have that. No, we're not going to do that. He persisted. He kept at it. Ladies and gentlemen, he kept at it so much that the president of the bank actually contacted him at the very end. After everything was said and done. Because if it wasn't for him... The young man had an attorney. He did get an attorney. But if it wasn't for this man making this an issue, because nobody would have known about this incident. Nobody was broadcasting about this incident, but this man right here. So I give Mr. Eric Rasmussen a lot of credit because he didn't let it go. He could have just did the simple story and say, we'll keep you posted and never kept anybody posted. Y'all know the stories I'm talking about. No, this young man did not say we will keep you posted and then let it go and went on to another story. He stuck with this and he didn't owe this young man a thing. But I can guarantee you one thing. He didn't appreciate what they did to him. So let's pay attention. I want you to see. When police got the call to a busy U.S. bank branch in Columbia Heights last year, a call for a fraudulent check and a suspect posing a threat. How's it going? 
This is how they found 23-year-old Mississippi native Joe Morrow sitting in a chair in the bank manager's office. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Sorry. The police, no wonder she came in there with an attitude. No wonder you're going to see the sergeant is going to accuse the man of making a threatening move. No wonder she came in there with an attitude because they said that he was posing a threat. They said that he was posing a threat, ladies and gentlemen. The one thing they say about black persons is that they are a threat or they are armed with a weapon. I think he has a gun. I think he has a knife. He threatened my life. Oh, my stars. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? Yeah, can I, can I, can I, can I ask a question? No. Leaning back with his hands folded, police blurt out branch manager John Asquith as state law requires because he did not want us to see or hear him in the video. Mora wanted everyone to know what happened. I just got through working like 12 hours, I think. His job at UNFI, a grocery supplier better known as Super Value in Hopkins. Closer to home, Morrow stopped here at U.S. Bank in Columbia Heights to cash his paycheck for $900. Despite having an account, that simple transaction was anything but. And they was what you guys may not have paid attention to, but I recognized it. The last photo, you see how he has U.S. Bank in the background, and there's nobody in the parking lot because they would have gotten him for trespassing. Okay, apparently they weren't going to allow that news camera or that crew on their property. They probably already gave them a order cease and desist and all that, no trespassing. They probably already gave them that. But notice what happens. Oh, looking at me and just staring at me. And then looking at the check and then staring at me again, I'm like, now I'm already knowing like what they think and the, the check fake. The manager, she, he came over and said, Joe Morrow, your check fake. And I said, what? He said, you people are always coming in here with fake checks. Who do you think he meant? Black people. I worked there, bro. And I'm going to report you too, bro. Morrow continued pleading his case with Police Sergeant Justin Pletcher in the room. Wait a minute. He said, I'm going to report you too. He says, I'm going to report you too. Not you too as in two people, but I'm going to report you also. That's what he said. He says... I'm going to report you. He's already saying, y'all, what y'all doing is wrong. Now, the officer doesn't appear to believe that he's a threat because notice how far back the officer is. Now, he's showing the officer his paperwork. Okay, this is my check. This belongs to me. This is not fraudulent. But there's no evidence that the check is fraudulent. They don't have anybody to say that it's fraudulent other than the manager of the bank saying it's a fraudulent check. Ladies and gentlemen, the check wasn't fraudulent. He never called the bank manager. He called the police before he called the bank manager. I mean, not the manager of the bank, but the manager of the facility or their human resource department. He called, and every bank has a contact person with corporations to contact when there's an issue with a check. You guys have had that happen before. Let me verify this. And they'll call that number to verify that that is a check being issued by that company. You've all been through that. I've been through they didn't do that here. They told him that he had a fraudulent check. Now remember, he's got a beanie on, and he's got a mask on his face. Oh no, he looks like a criminal! Yeah, right. Let's continue. Morrow's claim of racial profiling immediately met with this war. Wait a minute, hold on. Now he said that he believes he's being racially profiled. I want you to hear what this sergeant says to him. One second. Morning. Joe, I need you to calm down, first of all, okay? I need you to calm down, first of all, okay? Does it look like he's calmed up? Does it look like he's excited, like he's yelling, like he's screaming, like he's raising his voice? Is he cursing anyone out? So why does the officer tell him to calm down? It reminds me of the Boondocks episode. Officer, he's got a gun! He doesn't have a gun, officer! Officer! He has a gun! What are you gonna do? Are you gonna let him sit up there and pull that gun out on you? Officer, he doesn't have a gun! Look, it's obvious! He's not, I don't have a gun, officer! Look! And, officer, he's got a gun! The absence of evidence is not the absence of evidence! You guys, if you don't remember that episode, I promise you, for me, it is a classic. 
Because when they did that, they were playing on the stereotype of what people of color go through. Hold on. You need to calm down. I had an officer tell me that when I was on vacation. Told me I needed to calm down. And I told him I'm not even calmed up. So how in the world am I supposed to calm down when I'm not even calmed up? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a sergeant. Notice an officer is going to come in, not a sergeant. An officer is going to come in. And this sergeant is going to let that officer take control. Why? Because in the police force and in the military, sergeants don't have the type of power and pull you think they have. Okay? Pay attention. Don't say anything stupid because you're just going to get arrested for it. All right? Don't say anything stupid because you're just going to get arrested for it. This young man just threatened him. Threatened him with arrest. For what? He hasn't done anything. Oh, but if he says something stupid, he's going to get arrested for saying something stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, if saying something stupid could cause a person to get arrested, then Donald Trump would have been arrested at least 1,585 billion times. I'm just kidding. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this idiot just told him you are going to get arrested for it. For what? For saying something stupid. All right? I. You can't make this stuff up. I just did a video talking about how police treat people. This is the audio recording from the police. This is what this man actually said. I didn't make him say this. No one made him say this is what he said. Don't say anything stupid because you're going to get arrested for it. For saying something stupid, that's a crime. You cannot say something stupid because you're gonna you're gonna get arrested. So all you people don't say nothing stupid. That that's an arrestable crime. Go to jail for that. How long do I go to jail for saying something stupid? You keep asking stupid questions and I will sit up there and tell you. Okay? All right then. Shut up. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. As stupid as that was for him to say. Why? I want you to see two white men, one black man, another white woman is going to come. The whole bank is full of white people. Watch how they treat this young man. If you don't think this is racism, somebody needs to tell you. At the end, this sergeant is going to come talk to him and try to explain things to him to try to tone it down because he sees what just went on. He sees it was profiling because the check was good. It wasn't fraudulent. The young man did nothing wrong. The bank manager told him he called the company. He never did. He didn't call him until after they put this young man in handcuffs. Then they take the handcuffs off of him. The woman ain't nowhere to be found. The one who said he was doing something in a threatening manner, he didn't have a reason to be threatening. He was in the right. But black men are always portrayed as being violent. Remember, they called them saying that he was threatening them. He didn't threaten anybody. He did tell them, I'm going to report you too. So he told him he was going to report him. That's a threat. See, I always tell people, I threaten people all the time. I threaten people legally. Because that's how I handle things. So you can count that as a legal threat, mother. Okay? One second. Oh, by the way, this video for this guy that did it is only 10 minutes long. Because he can't talk as long as I can. Let's do this. Still sitting in the chair as the sergeant held his ID and his check, Morrow insisted it was the bank who owed him an explanation. They call me Two minutes later, he said, we can confirm that. Well, how come you haven't done it yet? We can confirm that. Again, he's being treated as if he is a criminal. Now, remember, hold on now. He hasn't done anything wrong. The bank manager claims that it's fake. 
He just told them, I work there. We can confirm that. Notice nobody's going to confirm anything. Watch this. What's the name? Sure. A second officer arrives, and the bank manager asks police to take Moro to an adjacent office. The manager told the officer, I right, can you get him out of my office? He might touch anything on my desk. I'm like, Excuse me? He's going to touch something on my desk? What the? He might touch something on my desk? Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. He might touch something on my desk. Get him out of my office. Get him out of my office. And he might touch something on my desk. Ladies and gentlemen, can somebody tell me what type of sense does that make? He might touch something on my desk. What's on your desk that he could touch? Because he's still trying to accuse this young man of being a thief, being a criminal, trying to steal something, trying to take something that doesn't belong to him. Pay attention. Like, I'm like, what? I'm like, that's, that's when I got super mad. Like, what? I'm like, wait, 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 wait. He got super mad. Look at this young man. Can you imagine him getting super mad? Let me show you what it means when he gets super mad. You're going to love this. I ain't never seen nobody get this mad in my life. Hold on. I touch him on your desk. Yo, that man. angle only visible for a second. Yo, let's go over there, man. When he complies yeah, with it. officer's orders and stands up. Okay, let's get to Okay, now she's arresting him. She's about to put... That's him getting super mad, ladies and gentlemen. The way he stood up, that's him getting super mad. She says that he was lunging towards the owner. Now, we're going we're gonna to play this back just a little bit so you can see that there is no lunging. Okay? Very important. So, we're going to do it without sound so you can see it. Okay? One second. But she's arresting him because she says he was going towards the manager when he's walking towards her to leave but let's let's let you see it again because it may have been too fast for you and this is youtube so i can't slow it down slow it down so you see she says that he's going that way so watch his body language he's turning towards her and she grabs him immediately she was already intending on grabbing him so one second let's uh do it one more again not that one, too, too, not too far back. See, she's saying because he did that, let's do it again. Now, I want you all to pay attention. Watch how he gets up. She says that he is making a threatening move to the manager. Look. And so she arrests him for that. Hands up. Okay, let's get up arrest him for that she grabs him for standing up okay let's handcuff him it was the sergeant who said that okay let's handcuff him she grabbed him before he said okay let's handcuff him she didn't have a right to grab him he wasn't under arrest he has not committed any crime He's not suspected of committing any crime. Wait, well, uh, back check. Watch and see. Let's let him tell his story. A split yeah, second, Moro like says he'll never forget. And like definitely when I got handcuffed and stuff, everybody looking like when I'm getting out, coming out of his office, I was handcuffed, so people looking. How did that make you feel? Like crazy, like like I'm a criminal or something. Like like I, I'm doing like something bad. Like I'm I actually came here with a fake check. In his report, the sergeant later wrote that Moro flexed at John, the bank manager, in a threatening manner. I he flexed at him. <gasps> oh my God! Uh, he was pop locking. Uh, he did a flex move. Uh, what did he do? He did a. He, he got on the ground. He put his hands down. He spun in circles, and then ended up spinning on his neck like I found over a bat roll when he was younger. Yeah, that's what he did a flex move. I didn't threaten him. I, I got up, like you know, in in in, in a, like you know, like a, like a mad. Do you have anything on you that could hurt harm hopefully anyone? Still handcuffed, Moro offered more evidence of his innocence. I got the chicks there. See, ladies and gentlemen, you ask me if I have any weapons on me that could harm you? Oh yeah, my brain, ho. And my ability to put paperwork together. That's what I got on me. I have an intellect that you can't even get anywhere near is what I got on me. So don't ask me no more questions. Where's my attorney? You, woman, you still asking me questions? Shut the uh, Get out my face, ho.
Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not joking with you. That's my response at that point. When she's asking him if he has any weapons or anything on him, she's conducting an investigation. She's looking for incriminating evidence. Okay? Just that simple. That's what y'all need to know. This young man, they claim, is threatening. Somebody places him in handcuffs. They don't take him out to the car. Pay attention, y'all. They don't take him to the car. They keep him in the bank in handcuffs. Let's play. I need to say what day it started and all that. How many hours I worked all that. I could have came here and showed him. Son, she's doing an investigation. That's why she's taking notes. She's going to take and use those words against you if there was an issue. If there was an issue. By all means, it would have been the police department and the bank I would have gone after. He only went after the bank. And he should have got the bank for filing a false report, but he settled with the bank. I would go after the police department, and I would go after them for relying on the bank's false report and not charging the bank for filing a false police report. That's what I would do. Even though he got a settlement, I would go after the police department. It's not a violation of the NDA because they, they did a non-disclosure agreement. Not a violation of the NDA if you charge the police for listening to the false report because the false report is already a matter of record. Why? Because they determined, well, let me let you hear it. According to the police report, the bank manager said he'd received a lot of fraudulent checks using the UNFI logo. Morrow says the manager claimed he already called the company and confirmed the check was fake. So who do we need to call? But this body camera video shows the bank manager did not actually make that critical call until after Morrow was already in handcuffs. So it's a real, the check number's real. Morrow's employer confirmed the check was, in fact, real. There's no question in my man, if he'd been white, this would never happen. Five Investigates showed the video to a community leader. Are you seeing that okay? I am. The founder of a nationally recognized implicit bias training program for police. But this is Minnesota. This is not who we are and University of Minnesota professor Samuel Myers, Jr. In 2015, he authored this study of discriminatory practices at banks in the Twin Cities, and he's focused on racial disparities in financial transactions for 35 years. I wish I could say that this was ambush. I wish we could say that. A... Now, Samuel, I'm going to say this. And I know you've heard it before. But until you heard him talk, you didn't even realize he was a black man, did you? That's right. That's what I said. You didn't even realize that. Samuel, go ahead and let him know what's going on. A liar. But it happens a lot. Myers, who is deaf. So this is it here. Watch the body camera video with us over Zoom with the assistance of captioning. We, as black people, are aware that these things happen at banks. Uh, grocery stores. Hold on. Hold on one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I have to go take care of something. At supermarkets, this is a classic example of instances where things escalated beyond what they needed to escalate to. Okay, John, let's get these cops up. Okay. But Morrow's ordeal okay. did not. Wait, wait. Okay. Joe, let's get these cuffs off you. Excuse me? Okay, Joe, let's get these cuffs off you. Excuse me, why did you put the cuffs on me in the first place? Why did you arrest me in the first place? See, once they put the cuffs on him, that's an arrest, people. But here, it's a false arrest, an illegal arrest. That's why I'd go after the police department. And when the handcuffs came off. So can I talk to you, man to man, real quick? For more than 10 minutes, Morrow okay. remained in this office. They're, they're making fake checks with that logo on it, right? Sergeant Pletcher did most of the talking. So the branch manager... I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. They, they do the commercials thing, and I apologize to you guys for that because that's, that's YouTube. So give me a second to get through this stupid thing. I don't have the commercial blocker 
there it is right there so one second just got to go through that stupid stuff with YouTube Sergeant Pletcher did most of the talking ladies and gentlemen he's not talking about saying anything stupid and being arrested for it remember he came there with the intent to arrest the black man so what the branch manager has to do is call him if that's a good check no this had nothing to do with the check you ignorant mother he said that this man was in his bank threatening acting in a threatening manner really that's what you all need to pay attention to has nothing to do with whether or not the check was fraudulent or not because somebody said that it was fraudulent and they never called the bank i mean they never called the company but then they said he was in the bank acting in a threatening manner then they said he acted as if he was lunging towards someone flexing Oh, I'm a flexor. A lot of you who have never been through this don't understand. Because you'll think this was no big deal. The bank has a right to do, the bank is insured. If it was a fake check, we're not cashing that. Send the mother on his way. But no, the manager, because the manager came to him. He didn't ask for the manager. The manager came because the representatives came and they kept saying this is a fake check. Saying we're getting a lot of checks from there. If you're getting a lot of checks from there, then how come you didn't call them? If you're getting a lot of checks from there, how come you didn't work out a program? Because that's what they've been doing, ladies and gentlemen. A company gets a lot of fake checks uh, being made on their company. They change things up and they let the banks know this is going to be what's going to be indicated on the checks from now on. And if you have any questions here's the number you need to call to verify that check then they put a person in charge of that and they put special people in charge who know what check numbers are out there and they match up names and check numbers and say yes that's a legitimate check we don't issue checks at SACOM so we don't have a problem with individuals falsifying our checks we do everything electronically why because it's much easier and most banks do that now so that people don't go through this but he had an account with the bank. He was depositing the money in his own account. Do you know what the bank eventually said? That he didn't have an account with him. Really. I need you to stay calm for that, okay? Because when you, when you start acting like this. Acting like this, do you hear him? I need you to stay calm. When you start acting like this, you look even guilty. It makes you look even guilty. When you start acting like this, it makes you look guilty. Can somebody tell me what it looks like to be looking like you're guilty? I ain't never seen a guilty look. Oh, man, I wonder what the juries go off of. They go off of guilty looking people? It makes you look even guilty. No, I'm not guilty. No, 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 I know. I'm saying when you, when you start getting upset and irate, it makes you look guilty. They said he got irate. Now, wait, now, Samuel, hold on now. <laughs> now, Samuel's a professor and he's deaf, but he can talk, but he's deaf. Now, I want you to pay attention. <laughs> the police officer said, when you get irate, did you, anybody see him get irate? I thought he was pretty calm for somebody calling him a liar, a thief, and a fraud an individual who was deliberately attempting to commit fraud against a bank and against an employer. Hold on. And then they fraudulently arrest him in front of the public, embarrassing this young man who had an account with that bank. Interesting, ain't it? Well, you're acting guilty. And so the question is, what is acting guilty? Tell me, what is acting guilty? Thank you. Samuel. I'm sorry, but Thank this you. is who I have blamed him Thank for you. creating the racism that he's feeling. Don't do it. What is acting guilty? Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Can anybody define what stupid is? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is hilarious. Because it happens all the time, people. And that's what you, you guys don't understand. That's why you have so many people of color in jail. Because this is what they do. This young man did nothing wrong, but they were sure enough ready to take him to jail.
And if they hadn't called the bank, he would have been in jail. They would have booked him and he would have had to bail out. And he probably would have ended up losing his job. Why? Because he's cashing a check. His check that he just worked for. Which means if he ends up in jail, he probably doesn't have the monies to bail out. And it's COVID season. See, he's got a mask on. Now, I like the fact he's got his nose uncovered, but he's got a mask on. Hold on, y'all. It was another part of this exchange Are you kidding? that struck a nerve with Tyrone Terrell. So, play calm, play cool, and wait for you to be validated. Okay? Oh, my God. Wait for you to be validated. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I need the whites folks to validate me. Because I can't exist in society without validation. Okay, here's my papers, sir. I was a free slave. No, I was a free, I was a free Nick. I promise you I was a free Nick. I, I is. I is. No, I didn't say the word all the way. I said Nick, but you know what I mean. That's what I is. I was free. I tell you, I swear I was free. Here's my papers, mother. I was free. Ladies and gentlemen. People of color need validation. No, you didn't catch it. So let me let the sergeant explain it to you again. You to be validated, okay? Oh my God. The former director of the St. Paul Department of Human Rights and the president of the African American Leadership Council says the sergeant's choice of words matters. Wait to be validated. That's four and 50 years of history of slavery. Do we got to still wait for America to validate us? Come on. Columbia Heights police declined our request for an interview, but in a statement, Chief Lenny Austin said his department reviewed the incident and found the officer's actions were reasonable and they conducted themselves professionally. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they did conduct themselves professionally. They did conduct themselves professionally because racism is a professional sport. It is practice, and individuals achieve great strides in the field. There are some people who are going for world records. These officers arrested him, had no cause. They could have simply said, sir, we're going to need to ask you to leave. Well, I'm going to need my check back. Oh, no, we're going to hold on to this. What do you mean you're going to hold on to my check? That is my property. Well, it's a fraudulent check. Where is the proof of fraud? No, as a matter of fact, I tell you what. You're a sergeant. I'm going to need to speak to the watch commander. Because I've had enough. So, yes, I'll leave. I don't have a problem with leaving. But I promise you, let me see if I can, let's see who I can go call. Let's see what news station will want to pick this up. By all means, let's play my thing. But hold on, y'all. If you feel it's a racist thing, okay, handle it differently. Sergeant Pletcher wouldn't go on the record with us, but still sent us links to network news programs. Am I not on this? Hold on, y'all. Because he helped out a person of color during the uh, Regin. Uh, dang it. See, and that's a shame because I know the man's name and I can't even say it. And they told us not to remember, I mean, not to forget his name, George Floyd. I was going to say Reginald Denny. Yeah, I know because I'm thinking Rodney King. Okay. That's why I said, how long will this keep going on? But he, because he helped out some person of color during the Rodney King incident, that makes him all right. He ain't racing this, 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 this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not accusing the sergeant of being racist. And if anybody else is, they're wrong because he didn't do anything racist. What he did is he took sides. Okay? He suspected the young man was already guilty. Told him, don't do anything stupid or you're going to get arrested for it. Told him to calm down. Told him that his behavior, and I love that. Because that's the first thing people of non-color do, is talk about somebody's behavior as if we're children. 
be a good little boy and go sit down. No, we're going to get you when we feel like it. Be a good little boy and go over there and sit down. No, your behavior is just, I know, your behavior, your behavior right now. No, that behavior right there, that's the behavior I'm talking about. That's their favorite word, your behavior. How can you tell a mother and grown man about his behavior? Sorry. The same side as my community that I'm feeling them and I'm feeling this badge. He was praised on national TV for how he handled a call involving a black health inspector two days after the death of George Floyd. I think we need. Wait, a black health inspector? Because the person is a health inspector, somebody who has some credentials? You helped him? No, no, no. Show me you helping that young man over there who's part of a gang. That one, show me you helping somebody like that. Or the homeless guy. The homeless guy who's pushing the basket. Show me you helping those people. Don't show me you're helping some public servant. That's your job, you ignorant mother. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I did not know they said he was helping uh, a public servant, somebody who works for the system. More police officers to speak up. But Pletcher is not talking about this video that few have seen until now. There are going to be plenty of people, I imagine, mm -hmm. who will say, this officer acted admirably. He spoke calmly. He told plenty, them to calm down. Plenty of white... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. <laughs> I like what you're about to say. This guy right here, this reporter, exactly what he's saying, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly the point. There are going to be plenty of people who are going to say, what, like the uh, the chief, that the Sergeant and the other officer acted within reason. Even the courts will say that they acted within reason. So let's get away from reason. And let's say were their actions lawful, not legal, lawful, that they violate the young man's rights. When the officer put him in handcuffs, did she have a reason? Remember, the other officer had already talked about him getting arrested before anything happened. She was already there with her hands on the desk facing him because she was the one who was posing the threat to him. That's why she stood in front of him the way she did. She said, what's his name? And she immediately went over there to assert her, her authority. The young, the young lady who just, the police officer who shot, and I think his name is Dante White. I'm not sure the young man's name because... I had only seen when it happened the first time, and then just now recently I saw two more videos. So I hadn't really paid attention to the, the white videos, but I will. Was it Dwight? I don't know if it's Dante White or Dwight. I do know, I, and I'm sorry, people, okay? I'm sorry, especially that the young man died in the way he died. What I will tell you is exactly what I pointed out, the same thing the jury saw, but they want to blame her for not going and doing something and helping out at the scene. You should be blaming those other officers who stood there and stood around while that car took off and crashed. None of them went and followed behind. None of them went to go help the people who were in the car. They all stayed around her. And all you needed was one officer to stay around her. Or two. But all of them stayed there. When he got in the car and he drove off, it was literally slow motion after she shot. And I guess they were all in shock or something to see something like that going on. But don't make no sense. So go ahead and tell him again. This officer acted admirably. He spoke calmly. He told plenty, him to calm plenty, down. Plenty of white people. I'm looking through the lens of a black man who dealt with too many of these cases. Was the flinching, so-called flinching, visible in the video? Well, I'll take you back to it. Lori Fridell is a professor at the University of South Florida and the founder of the Fair and Impartial. Now, I want you to see how this wench, and I'm going to call her that because she's supposed to be fair and impartial. I want you to see how she explains away the officer's actions. Go ahead. Let's do that. Policing training program. I did not discern anything in the video that showed Mr. Morrow as being threatening. Um, maybe they saw things that I did not see, or maybe this could be related to one of the implicit associations that's well documented in the research. 
And that research shows that many of us see more threat in people of color. For de- okay, now that part I give her credit for. But she said maybe there's something that I did not see that the video does not explain. Now, she didn't say that part, but that's what the lawyers have done. They tell people, well, the video doesn't explain everything. Excuse me? The video doesn't explain everything. Excuse me? The video doesn't explain everything. The video doesn't cover every angle. Really? So your eyes cover every angle? I didn't see him reaching for a gun. Didn't see him reaching for a knife. Didn't see him getting ready to take a swing across that desk. It is literally three feet. I had a situation where I was helping somebody with their case, and somebody was accusing him of threatening a manager in a store. And that's exactly what they, this guy was Hispanic. And he was a darker Hispanic, believe it or not. Matter of fact, I don't remember his name, and that's a shame. Um, But he was a darker Hispanic, and I was assisting him with his case. And as I'm assisting him with his case, I'm explaining to him how to, because that's what I do. People give me the police report, and I, man, I eat the police report for dinner. Because police reports are so backwards. Because they lie. Police are often lying when they write a report. And all you got to do is catch them in the lies. Not just one or two. I usually find at least five lies. Especially in the timeline or in the way they tell the story. Impossible for it to have happened that way. Because it just could not. Reality says it couldn't happen that way. That's how I handle and get people's sentences reduced. No, I'm not helping none of y'all with y'all cases. Nope, sorry. I don't have that type of time anymore. When I was on vacation, I was helping people all the time with their cases, helping people with their appeals within the institution and outside the institution. But I can't, don't have the time, and it's just too much work. But let's continue. Elle commended the sergeant for doing what she called a debrief with Morrow and advising him that he could file a complaint against the bank. This is very important in policing. You know, when you've had an interaction, sometimes it can be very uh, tension reducing to sit down with the person and say okay this is look here you wench you stupid kyle that young man was just arrested and they're still holding him in that bank he is not free to leave they should have allowed him to leave but he was not free to leave can i talk to you for a minute you just put handcuffs on me. What the? F- okay, hold on, y'all. This is what was going on. But that tension still parent a year later. No, I'm a little nervous with the cameras, but yeah. When Morrow sat down with us for this interview, by that time his lawyer had sent two letters to U.S. Bank demanding a settlement and an explanation. They've never taken any accountability. They've never truly apologized to Mr. Morrow. In October, U.S. Bank declined our request to interview manager Askwith or anyone else with the bank and instead sent us this statement saying, U.S. Bank is committed to fairness toward... Ladies and gentlemen, before I let you guys read about this, notice that all the videotape of the bank is from a distance because they have not given them everyone we serve regardless of race adding we dispute the facts as they're being portrayed to you two weeks later the bank quietly reached an undisclosed settlement meaning no one with u.s bank or moro can ever talk about what happened here again hey joe man i'm sorry you had to go through this thing any additional apology now confidential keep working hard again what's almost lost in all of this is that Wait, wait, wait. Did you see what the sergeant told him? Keep working hard so you guys can stop me from getting access to my monies? What the? Sorry. Joe Morrow was already a customer with U.S. Bank. Says he had an account there. We reached back out to U.S. Bank one more time, and last week a spokesperson added that the bank's own internal investigation found nothing to indicate that Morrow's race was a factor in the service he received. Of course, as you heard, lawyers, experts, and advocates are not convinced. They say this is part of what's been called banking while black. And in fact, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I thought the bank said he didn't have an account. Do you notice that they never spoke of the fact that he had an account with them? Ladies and gentlemen, if it was a fraudulent check and he had a bank account, what do the banks normally tell you? We're going to have to put a two-day hold on the check. We're going to have to put a three-day hold on the check. Isn't that what they normally say? When they suspected of being fraud and you have an account with the bank, they let you know that they're going to put a hold on the check, right? 
Well, how come they didn't do that with this young man? Interesting, ain't it? It's a wonderful world. I mean, it truly is a wonderful world. All right, hold on now. In the last year, more people have been sharing their stories, Kevin. We'll hear from some of them tomorrow and look at what's being done about this. Eric, your reporting is important. We need to keep telling these stories. Thank you to Mr. Morrow for sharing his, and we look forward to seeing what you have for us tomorrow on Nightcast. Now, you notice this? All the interactions this young man had, every single person was not a person of color. But I am glad that this young man spoke up because he saw something that just wasn't right, and it just wasn't a story story. He saw something that just wasn't right, that just didn't add up, and he spoke up. All I can say is interesting, interesting, interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, this for me is going to be a very long evening, especially with the amount of rain, and I'm just, it's going to be a very, very interesting evening. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short. I just, banking while black, I just, I couldn't, couldn't help it because this stuff happens and this is the 21st century and this stuff still happens and everybody wants to pretend that it doesn't exist. And yes, I could care less about black lives matter and all that other bull crap, but y'all need to understand those of you who don't get it, that this happens all the time. Now, let me show you so that you can see that this happens all the time. And then I got a video I'm going to do about the Matrix, and that's coming right after this. And I won't hit that button twice this time. Um, got to give my screen a little time to the overlay to refresh and take us on back down. But get out of here. I don't want to upgrade you right now. Get on out of here, I see. Now, what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, so that y'all, we ain't even supposed to be there. Yeah, we're supposed to be this view. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show y'all something. Let me show you something! Okay, do you see? Black man, this is this young man. This is Bank of America in San Diego. And this is the apology issued by, oh, 12 days ago. Okay, the CEO apologized now wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me make sure because I didn't check this. Twelve days ago. Okay, so after the <laughs> after the uh what do you call it? The investigation and the thing goes to the news, then all of a sudden the CEO wants to apologize. It's over a year later, ladies and gentlemen. But apparently he's gotten people's attention. So I give them some credit. Okay, I give them some credit. Now, TD Bank apologizes to this young man, um, treated him and when he tried to cash a check. Another check cashing issue, when they're trying to cash a check, and this is what they're going through, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's not just one, it's not just two, it's happening all the time, and a lot of people don't report it, ladies and gentlemen. And when you do report it, the banks ignore you. You accuse somebody of racism, and the first thing they want to do is say is that they're not racist. No, your actions are. You may not be racist, but your actions totally document what you are. Okay? Look, there was a, a prophet, and he said that they'll be recognized by their fruit. A good tree cannot produce rotten fruit, and a rotten tree cannot produce good fruit. You'll be known by your fruit. Ladies and gentlemen, I try as best I can to wear my everything on my sleeve out in the open so that nobody has to sit up there and think anything. You come at me, I'm going to tell you exactly the way things are. I'm not going to sit up there and sugarcoat nothing for you. Why? Because I'd rather have you offended by what I said than to sit up there thinking that I like you. Okay, and that I'm there for you, and that I'm going to be your best friend for life. In other words, I'd rather have you offended than for me to lie to you, because, again, I'd have to be afraid of you to lie to you, and I ain't afraid of nobody. Anyway, got to go, ladies and gentlemen. 50 minutes talking about a 10-minute video. Who does that?
Only you. You're the only person I know who would do something stupid like that. Yeah, well, you gotta go get to know your mother a little bit better. Because that hoe does the same thing. All right, gotta go. Take care. I'm out of here.